What's up, everyone? I hope you're all doing well today. And today I want to talk about how ridiculous the government stances, or the federal prosecutor's stances on Roman Sterlingoff. And from now on, I'll call him Roman because I probably butchered his last name. Um, but him and Bitcoin Fog, they're pushing for this crazy 30-year sentence, which is absolutely a life-altering punishment for basically running a privacy tool. Like, that's more time than many violent criminals actually serve. The The whole case, uh, in this case, absolutely reeks of overreach, especially when you consider how the government is selectively targets different people and uh, these tools while actually turning a blind eye to much, much bigger issues. First, let's look at some of the basics of the federal prosecutor's actual argument that Bitcoin fog catered to criminals. And it's absolutely true that criminals used it, um, just as they use cash, cars, and cell phones. And by the government's logic, we should start imprisoning automakers for selling cars that are used in getaways or cell phone manufacturers for producing phones that people use to do illegal business. The fact is that Bitcoin mixers like Bitcoin Fog are just tools. And like any other tool, they can be used for good or for bad. And what's particularly annoying, especially in this case, is just the level of hypocrisy that really exists in it. While they're going after Roman for enabling money laundering, the traditional financial system continues to facilitate much larger and more harmful crimes, which barely warrant a slap on the wrist. And in some cases, absolutely nothing like the Pentagon losing trillions or, you know, the billions that are lost on a regular basis um, in this country. While if, you know, I send you over $600 on, you know, a money app, you're going to have a visit from the IRS and, you know, a threat of imprisonment, which is insane. So the whole point of it catering to criminals is pretty facetious uh, at the end of the day and not really an argument. It's kind of hollow when we actually analyze it with any kind of logic whatsoever. One of the examples we could give to actually back up this the hypocrisy um, is a bank called HSBC, which, for example, was a bank that was caught red-handed laundering billions of dollars for drug cartels and terrorists. And you know, what was their punishment? Who in that organization got 30 years or a life sentence? It was a fine. There was, you know, no one went to jail or prison and business continued as usual. But when it comes to Roman, a guy running a, you know, crypto service, the government suddenly finds it, you know, morally reprehensible and grows a moral compass and now demands decades behind bars for a nonviolent crime. And the disparity is just absolutely absurd, in my opinion. So now let's talk about the actual usefulness of coin mixers like Bitcoin Fog, specifically for dark net market vendors. And I would say the truth is that they're not really as effective for operational security as some might actually think. The government has been steadily trying to improve its ability to trace things like Bitcoin transactions, even through mixers. Chain Analysis, a blockchain analysis company that works closely with law enforcement, has proven that it's absolutely possible to untangle even mixed transactions. And you catch that there? It's a, it's a private company that was competent enough to be able to do this, not the actual government. They weren't even... Like, <laughs> It's the, the ability matters, you know, um, and the lack of ability also matters, in my opinion, which is just it's just funny to point out that they have to give millions to this private company in order to be able to actually do this, as opposed to being able to figure it out themselves. You know, I mean, they're still having trouble filling in potholes, so it's not really a shock. In any case, there are studies that actually show that mixers are increasingly ineffective at fully anonymizing actual interactions. One report by the RAND Corporation actually highlighted that while mixers do add a layer of complexity, they don't actually guarantee anonymity or even privacy, especially when the government is willing to, again, spend millions of dollars on blockchain forensics. So for all the darknet vendors that are out there thinking a mixer is going to keep them safe, <laughs> think again, using mixers can actually draw more attention from authorities uh, who see them as red flags for illegal activity. And this is a classic case of false security. Vendors might feel protected, but in reality, they're painting a much bigger target on their backs. 
And let's not forget that government crackdowns on privacy tools definitely is not about fighting crime, just like it wasn't in the 90s with the um, crypto wars. It's really about control. They hate anything that lets people slip through their surveillance nets that they've set up so carefully. The same government that's charging Roman with money laundering conspiracy has absolutely been caught abusing its power to do things like spy on its own citizens. The NSA's mass surveillance programs revealed by Edward Snowden absolutely showed how far they're willing to go. And now they're coming after anyone who dares to create tools that help people reclaim just a little bit of that lost privacy. So what's happening to Roman really is just the latest chapter in the government's war on privacy. They're trying to send a message. And the message is, if you challenge our control, we'll ruin your life. <laughs> and by this heavy-handed approach, it, it only really shows their fear of the future, where people can operate outside their reach. And it's no wonder that more and more people are actually turning to things like decentralization and anonymity technologies. And they're trying to escape a system that's increasingly overbearing and unjust. So while prosecutors push for a 30-year sentence, we should be asking ourselves, is this really about justice? Or is it about making an example of someone who dared provide a tool for privacy and maybe a little bit of anonymity back in the day in a world that's actually losing it? To me, the answer is pretty clear, and it's really not pretty. This isn't justice. It's a vendetta against anyone who challenges our surveillance state that's been out in the open. It's being done in the name of fighting crime, when in reality, it's really about keeping the public in line and under control, which is a whole other topic that we're not going to get into today. But I wanted to make a comment on that because you constantly have this push for these ridiculous sentences, especially in the feds. A lot of the times you can see that same stuff in the state, but in the feds, they like to hit you with 10 million years just to be able to clear headlines so that assistant United States attorneys make the news. They look tough on crime. You know, imagine being the person who's going to be put in prison for 30 years so that they can look tough on crime. And if you actually read their sentencing documentation, what they actually say is that 30 years is lenient because they could go for a life sentence. It's absurd, especially considering the fact that Roman didn't kill anyone. He didn't even punch anyone in the face. See, there was no even assault in this case. And a lot of these cases, it's difficult or even impossible for the prosecution to actually list victims, which alone should tell you a ton. At the end of the day, if you're being prosecuted or persecuted and looking at 30 years or a life sentence for a crime that they couldn't even list a victim for, I would say that the aggressor in that case is the real criminal, not necessarily the individual who provided a privacy tool to individuals. And, you know, obviously, no matter what those individuals elected to do with it, if we're going to hold people responsible for the actions of others, we're going to have a very serious problem in this world. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy this content, give it a like and a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.